So Alex, we have another case against Hartford in which a claimant prevailed, which is great to see because Hartford has hundreds of lawsuits. Well, I don't know if it's hundreds of lawsuits pending at any time. I know we've handled hundreds of lawsuits against them. So I'm making the assumption that at any given time they're managing hundreds of lawsuits. But let's talk about this case that came out of a Minnesota federal court against an employee that worked for the Excel Corporation who was denied benefits. Give us some background about what this particular claimant was going through and how the case came to be a lawsuit. Well, this poor guy worked for his company for six years and unfortunately got into a car accident and um, suffered some uh, numerous damages, including neck issues, elbow issues, hand issues. Um, he was forced to make a claim for both short-term and long-term disability benefits. Luckily for him, his uh, employer provided this disability insurance policy. Uh, he made the claim and, and actually the claim was initially approved and paid for about a year and four months or so. Um, during that time period, he had multiple surgeries. I'm talking three to four surgeries. Um, he was doing whatever he could to get back to work. I mean, this guy, I mean, it seems to be a testament of credibility, everything that he went through to get back to work. And he tried to go back to work. And in fact, he went back to work for a brief period of time, sometimes full-time, sometimes part-time, uh, had to leave work again, had more procedures done, and was trying to go back to work and scheduled to go back to work. And then he said, listen, my pain has got to the point where I cannot return to work again. Contacted the Hartford and said, listen, I just can't return to work. And what did Hartford do? They went ahead and denied the claim. Obviously, his appeals were denied and this lawsuit followed. Um, now, the reasoning behind Hartford's denial is his tr main treating physician was kind of um, wishy-washy on his level of support. I think with different procedures that were done by the doctor, sometimes the doctor thought, hey, he could work part-time, hey, he could ret return to work full-time, and then later on he said, hey, he can't work at all. So I think the different forms that the doctor was filling out were kind of, you know, different at, at different times. And one form that he sent to the Hartford said he can return to work full time. Another form that he sent to his employer said, this guy can't work at all. But Hartford only looked at the one form and said, we're denying this claim. So let, let's talk about this form. Um, Hartford requires what are called attending physician statements. And an attending physician statement was sent to the doctor. And was the doctor, was the doctor clear that this claimant couldn't work? I mean, what did he send to Hartford? So that's the problem. Some of these forms, I mean, they're, they're misleading sometimes. They can mislead a doctor. And the form that apparently that was sent to Hartford said that this, that this uh, claimant could return to work. The problem is, no matter what the form says, the objective evidence in the claim file is most important in any claim. I mean, you could have MRIs, you can have whatever it may be, showing that you are just a disabled individual. And just because a doctor check marks a single box on a form doesn't mean you can return to work. They, the insurance company cannot ignore the relevant evidence of a case. And I think in this instance, that's what they did here. Instead of looking at the objective evidence, they just looked at this form and said, hey, this doctor on this date said he could uh, return to work, so let's just go ahead and deny the claim. And it was kind of, I mean, it was lazy of them, it seems. So on the initial denial, the doctor submitted the form, probably filled it out incorrectly or didn't understand the form. And then on appeal, the lawyers who were representing the claimant submitted a, um, like a redaction per se, from the doctor where he submitted additional information and then said, no, you know, I don't think he could return to work. But did Hartford give that any weight? They did not. And I think that's where the judge found issue with Hartford's, um, Hartford's decision in this case. You know, they should have went further and said, hey, listen, doctor, we have multiple forms saying multiple things. Tell us what it really is. And they didn't do that. They ignored the objective evidence, so they ruled against this guy. So the court basically said, you guys are wrong. Hartford, you're wrong in, in this instance. You should have done more. You can't ignore relevant information of a claim. Right, and the relevant information that the court was talking about was you didn't look at all, you just looked at the form, you didn't look at all the medical records. You didn't look at all the treatment he was undergoing. You didn't look at that two weeks before the doctor filled out the form, he said, no, you shouldn't do any work. That's and correct. then two weeks later on the form, he says, yes, you should work. So, you know, this probably could have all been avoided, and we, we see this all the time in the claims that we manage, you know, for the clients we represent, is that the doctor isn't trained or doesn't understand the implications of what he's doing on this form. So the doctor really got his client, his patient, in a bad position, and that's something we see all the time. So that, that's one thing to take away from this, is that you really need to work closely with your doctor and review your medical records regularly to see what the doctor's putting in. And those forms... Whenever we're representing a claimant, those forms always come back to us. Correct. We never allow the doctors to send them straight back to the insurance company because we want to catch a problem like this before it turns into a denial that ended up taking two years to litigate 
to get back on claim. Correct. And these forms are, I mean, they're misleading in the first place. I mean, sometimes they give three boxes for your doctors to check, and it basically says sedentary, light, or heavy capacity, or medium capacity, whatever it may be. But what happens if you don't fall into one of those categories? What happens if you're less than sedentary? It didn't have a box there for less than sedentary. So the doctor check marks the, the least, you know, the least, the smallest one or the, the least one, right. but it still says, oh, your, your client can perform sedentary work. And, well, that's not true. The doctor just went to the one that was the, the least, the one most to the left, and thought, hey, I did a good job for this, for this patient of mine, but it's not true. So we like to review everything before we send it into the um, insurance companies just so we know what we're sending them is the truth. You know, and, and unfortunately for this person, like you said, he had to wait at least two years to get any money on his claim. He was out without money for two years. Maybe he had social security disability for all we know, but I'm sure times were tight for that long period of time. Right. The other thing to take away from this is, and we, we help claimants all the time, is that let's assume your doctor did fill out a form bad and that was the basis for the denial. If we have the opportunity to do the appeal, then we can definitely, assuming the doctor's cooperative, point out to the doctor the problem that was made or get another doctor to review your records, examine you, and present a different opinion if there is the support there. And that could be huge in trying to win the case on appeal even before you get to, to litigation. And if you do lose the appeal, now you have more clarification to go to the court. And that's what happened in this case is that the claimant got the clarification. Hartford still said, no, we're not buying it and we're not gonna pay you. Right, I mean, there's different ways that we can remedy an issue like this. If a doctor is you know, unsupportive or a doctor is unwilling to fix the form, um, you know, we can even point to the objective evidence in the file. We can file and find another doctor, like you said. There's ways that we can fix this issue to either get you back on claim with an appeal or make your, your claim for litigation that much stronger. So if you've been denied benefits by Hartford or you're considering filing a claim, um, no matter what stage your claim is at with the Hartford, any of our disability attorneys can help you. We're able to file these lawsuits and assist you anywhere in the country. We have clients basically in, in every state throughout the country. Give us a call. We'll always offer you a free consultation. Our lawyers always answer the phone right away, and we look forward to the opportunity to speak with you.